friends all know that I'm cool I've been this way since high school Cause life's never been sweeter When you're just a cake eater When it comes to hockey, nobody can stop me My high school team, I was playing on the top three Welcome to the Youth Hockey School Hockey Podcast, brought to you by Mayo Clinic Sports Medicine. I am Danny Ryan with a cold. Um, joined with you is Tony Scott. And I'm getting a cold, so... I think it's contagious. Yes, it is. <laughs> Sitting in a car with you for six hours may do that to you. <laughs> and Carl East, you did not get the cold from me. No, I'm safely quarantined away from you up here in Duluth, so <laughs> things are good here. I, I, I got to admit, it was kind of weird being in Duluth five minutes from where you live and not watching a hockey game with you. Yeah, that was, it was weird. Yeah. That was weird. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but anyways, we'll talk about that Duluth trip uh, where Tony and I saw Hermantown and Delano a little bit later in the show. So um, first let's start off with um, we saw some – there was pretty good hockey this weekend, right, you guys? Oh, yeah, great <laughs> hockey. Good tournament play. Um, let's talk about one player, one team um, that kind of stood out to you that – Maybe we haven't talked about that much, or if we have, you know, that's played well this week. I got it. There's a lot of unheralded players oh, out yeah. there and a lot of unheralded teams. Obviously, Minnehaha Academy jumps out to me. They win the open division. They will be in my top ten this week for Class A. And if you would have asked me two years ago if uh, <laughs> Minnehaha would have been in the top ten, I no. would have laughed. You said, no, nah, now they're here, and they're legit. I mean, they're – that makes Section 4 probably the best or second best section in the state next to 2A. Yeah. You know, 2A is still deep. Yeah. But I think but there, there's that's an up-and-coming section is 4A. So, uh, And then my player that stands out, and if you watched the Elk River-Stillwater game, it's pretty easy. If you can't spot Matthew Stanton, then you're an idiot. You know, he not only scored two goals, but I must have said – for, felt like the entire broadcast. Here comes, no, here comes the hat trick. Here comes the hat trick. You know, so he had lots of chances besides his two goals. You definitely said that a lot because I was watching that. Yes, <laughs> you, you did. Yeah, well, it, you know, it's, it's what you're looking for. You love those hat tricks. So those are my. That's my player, and that's my team. Many haha. Shout out to Coach, Coach Pat Griswold. He's done a great job there. He's done some, you know, good job of getting good kids over at Many Haha. Well, those of us who have skated at that rink once or twice before know that to you know play there is a a true test of yeah, fortitude. You leave Many Haha. <laughs> You leave Minnehaha a man, you know. It's colder than when in that rank, it's sure. colder in Minnehaha than outside of Minnehaha. Oh, never! It's 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 the brutal. It is so <laughs> you cold. You can't. I remember. I like it was too hard to even tie skates. Oh yeah, I have <laughs> many 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 hours at Minnehaha rink. Yes. <laughs> okay, Carl. Who you got? Sure. Uh, for my one team, I'm going to go with Centennial. Uh, their team I've seen a couple times before. They played this week in the Schwann Cup, and you know they always look decent. You know, borderline top 10 team, but they really turned it on this week. Um, big win over Minnetonka. They knocked off Eden Prairie. It looked pretty good in the loss to St. Thomas. And I think it really does want to this week that they're tough. I mean, hard nosed team. They're tough to get off their game, and they just keep coming at you. And they're up to number six in my ranking now after this week. Yeah, I so, believe I had him. I yeah. love it. I had him in my top 10 to start the season, and you guys yeah, 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 yeah. Well, they're playing good hockey right now. I mean, that Duluth East win was a pretty good win, and they had a good tournament. Um, we'll talk about them later. Who's your player? Uh, one player is going to be uh, Cole Kyle from Moorhead had a big weekend for the Spuds. I saw some of their game with Lake Bill North, a big win for the Spuds. He had four points, cutting down for four of the six goals in that game. So, it's a good protection weekend, and leaving the Spuds in the scoring. And Cole's only a junior. That junior class is tough, and obviously yeah. they have the two great sophomores mm-hmm. in Frisch uh-huh. and uh, Hinkemeyer Howe. So that's that's going to be a really good team next year. And they had a good um, St. Louis Park jamboree too. Yeah, they did very well. Yeah. They did very well. Um, okay, my um, my team is the Blake Bears. Um, I had seen Blake play er- earlier this season. I, I mean, they're led by Sasha Shogren. He had six goals this weekend, but they won the bronze division in the Swans Cup, which is, you know, Pretty impressive. You have a, another win over Minneapolis and a um, win against um, Chanhassen, I believe. Yep. And so I that was a convincing p- win. Yeah. Chanhassen. And so and they have a good head coach, um, Mays, oh, yeah. over there from Farmington. I mean, this is uh, this is a team that's kind of on the rise in that sense. You know, they they have their own rink. I mean, Blake is a traditional team, and it'd be nice to see if they can start to step step up in Section Two um, A. Here's a little Blake chatter for you here. 
Blake's remodeling their rink this yep. summer. Mm-hmm. Greg May is one of the up and coming coaches in the state, and they have one of the greatest eighth and ninth grade classes coming in. I talked to my nephew who played for Breck. I was telling <laughs> Blake is coming, and he's like, "Oh, <laughs> Blake is terrible." I'm like, "Watch out! They're eighth and ninth graders that they have coming in. They're putting a for Class A hockey." Will be as good as anybody in the state. Well, um, where did Linquist come from? Do you remember the story? He's Blake. Yep, yes, he, he coached at Blake. Yep. Is a good coaching ground. So yes. let's just put it that way. It's cradle of coaches. Cradle of coaches. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then my player, um, I'll kind of go on the beaten track, I guess, and say Ryan Sandlin stood out to me in the Hermantown Delano game. He's just so strong on the puck. He has a great move. Um, kind of reminds me of Michael Grant's move, where he's just power skates around you and. and and just very good at controlling the puck in uh, close quarters and getting around players. I really liked his play, and he just he's kind of the a heart player uh, on this team. He's like a tough toe or somebody like that that has just a lot of heart and doesn't want to lose, and that's where I see St. Allen right now. Yeah, his dad was the same way. His dad <laughs> it was a, just a hard-nosed player at Hibbing, came right at you, no, no nonsense kind of hockey player. They're a lot of like – they don't look alike, but they, they don't play alike, but they're, at the end of the day it's – that Straight type of style, of, yes. yeah. Uh, I th- and they need that type of style, that, you know, Hermantown identity, you know, sort of thing. And Ryan kind of um, shows that very well. And I, I thought he played a great game in that. Okay, um, so let's talk about these games. Um, we're going to kind of go a different format than when we prepped the games last week. Um, we're going to go – we're going to pick on Carl's top ten and t- – go on why we don't believe or believe this team is number one or number two and talk about their weekend. So let's start off with Stillwater. They went undefeated in the St. Louis Park Jamboree and they beat Elk River. Uh, they number one? Oh, there's there's no argument on that one. They're the only <laughs> undefeated team. If you Technically, I think Hill Murray is still undefeated. No, they, they beat, lost. They lost the Tom. So now we can say they're the only <laughs> undefeated team <laughs> in the state um, and they've beaten – Everything that's been thrown at them yeah. and beat the number two team in the state. I think they're a legit number one team. And a friend of mine was asking me about it. He goes, are they really that good? I'm like, they have speed. They have – they're like all the others but haven't lost. You know, yeah. they, have, they have all the things that Eden Prairie has. They have all the things, obviously, Elk River has. But Elk River – I'll put a small, little tiny asterisk on the wing over Elk River with Jax Murray out. That's not a true number two team in the state if he's going to be out for an extended period of time. Carl, what, why'd you put um, Stillwater at number one? It's pretty obvious. I think they're the only undefeated team. I think we talked about this stuff last week, but they this was their first serious test against South River, so there's some question now. Are they going to be ready for, for prime time? Can they handle you know, a, a battle-tested team like Elk River? They have no problem with it. So they deserve to be number one. I, I think I will be completely confident that they are the number one team in the state when they beat Eden Prairie in Hockey Day. Is that a fair assessment? Yeah. I don't know. Eden Prairie's not looking like a <laughs> true <laughs> but, opponent right now. <laughs> yeah, according according to you, they're ninth in the state. I still see them in the state tournament and, and a very viable option <laughs> to win this whole thing. So I like your number nine there. That's a little shock value. Uh, don't don't cannibalize number nine. We'll we'll make fun of number nine when it's there. Okay, okay fine. Um yep. okay, number two, Elk River. Um Elk River won two um two and one in the St. Louis Park tournament. I, I think this is, you know, still the question marks remain at Elk River. Are, they're very deep, and they're very solid on all aspects of the puck, but, you know, they still have a couple question marks. Can they finish when it's important? Can they – I don't know. Well, I thought they finished in their pr- their two games. They were close games, and they put their opponents away in the, in the third period, and I thought that would may happen against Stillwater because it was one-to-one going to the third and – and it didn't. It was just the opposite. I still think it's a big, the big question marks, big asterisks is how healthy is Jax Murray? Yeah, because they yeah. are a. I think they're a six to ten type of team without Jax. Correct. And they're a one to five type team with Jax, and we saw that in the Holiday Classic. I I think against deeper teams, Elk struggles right now. Is that a fair assessment? If you look, they struggled against Edina. Edina can skate with you on, across all lines. Um, you know. I wouldn't call Eden Prairie that deep, and they were without Nikki Learman when they beat them. 
They beat Grand Rapids, and Rapids clearly is not a deep team. Um, I think they will struggle against the deeper teams of the Stillwaters of the world. I think the key ingredient isn't deep, it's speed. I mean, Edina okay. had that speed, and Stillwater they had their way with them, and Stillwater had the speed. I mean, you saw this Mason Bartosh kid. Yeah. Holy smokes, is he good. You know, they had a lot of little speed demons on that second and third lines that were giving Elk River trouble. Carl, what's your takeaway on Elk right now? Yeah, I mean, again, not, nothing too different from what you do have said. They're a solid team, they balance across the board. Um, yeah, and th- those question marks just linger about them in big games, and that, that didn't change this past week. Uh, but the, they're still number two, and I, I think they mm-hmm. deservedly should be in the top five. Now, a, a team that had a question mark this weekend is your number three team in Grand Rapids. They tied yeah. Andover, even though leading shots 47-20-something. to 20 something. I, I mean, but what I heard about Rapids is they split their top line in the first period mm-hmm. of that game. And I don't think, if you look at Rapids, they cannot split that top line. You just got to ride that train for what it's worth. I agree. That's the no, formula. I, I've been saying all along that they should at least look at having two on one line and one on another. I think, you know, I, I, I've said this before, no, any number of times in this show. Now, you can't wait out the a tough double-A section with one line. And I continue to believe that, but putting one of them on each, each of their three lines, that seems a little extreme. Here, Here's my takeaway to uh, opposite that. I think their chemistry, Carl, all three together, is much better than two and one because – all three together play. Uh, they each have a different style that they bring to the table that really complements each other really well. Yeah, I mean, would, could you ever see Trent Eigner splitting up the Paling Brothers? I mean, this is what this <laughs> yeah. is what uh, Trent did last yeah. weekend. I, I, I disagree. Yeah. After watching them uh-huh. play a handful of games now, I think they got to ride it and go with it. But I think maybe he's just, you know, mid-season. Let's try something new and see if we can find some chemistry there. The scary part is you did that against a section opponent, and now you have a section tie, which is not good for seeding. Even if they beat Duluth East and East beats Elk River, now you're looking at, uh, yeah, you know, that's that's where I have questions. I don't this. think Trent Clack cares. I don't think so either, but I think Rapids fans do. Okay, fine. Fine. Okay, number four, Carl, you have Edina. I don't believe in this. I think Edina is number two. So do I. In, in my When I read yeah, it, I was, I, was ex- yeah. I was expecting them to be number two. Yeah. You win the Schwann Cup gold, that, that's you've beaten three good teams. Well, I, I even texted Carl. Carl asked me the opinion of the STA Edina game. I said that they're number two. And here's why. They beat, uh, they beat St. Thomas. Yep. They beat Eden Prairie, who they previously lost to. Yeah. And, and – you know, they beat Elk River. And, and if you look, they should have beaten Grand Rapids, but Rapids won a Rapids style. Technically, of they beat Rapids. And, like, in all yeah, intents, yeah, yeah, they I mean, beat them in every aspect except the goals, and yeah. the, which why that was a good game. But I, their losses are understandable. Uh, the Holy Family loss to start the season. Yep. Holy Family's, in my opinion, never going to be as good as that game. Just because uh, Matt Anderson was healthy, you had Tabor and Hankinson that were up and Fired ready. To, uh, that whole staff is the dynasty staff for their coaching level. So I, I really think that you know that game's kind of a wash. Eden Prairie in the Holiday Classic was a good game, but you know they were already kind of reeling in the Holiday Classic and they lost to Rapids. So this is a. Uh, an Edina team that I think is the number two team in the state right now and playing very well. I, I can't argue with that. No. Uh, Why did you put them at four, Carl? Just a question mark. I want to call you out on this. Yeah, sure. I, I think I think there's still, still some lingering questions. Our young team, a couple of losses, like Eden Prairie's loss was bad the first time around. It was lopsided. So there's no possibility that the wheels could fall off somewhere. You know, they're, they're still fighting their way. But I have no objection with putting them at two, certainly. Okay. Number five, you have St. Thomas Academy. I, I think this is a fair place to put St. Thomas Academy right now. Um, I have question marks with them um, with the way that their third line is not very physical. They're just all speed, so you can't really put their third line against another Class 2A third line because a 2A third line is a bruising third line, so you can't really put a speed third line out there. So that's a question mark. Tony? I love St. Thomas Academy, and I, I love that third line. I, I love, love that them. you love them, too. <laughs> I love that team. I think they're really good. I think that's a, you know, they're the type of team that you don't want to 
face in the first round of state tournament. No, but I, I think you have question marks on their D. Their D kind of play loose. With Stucker plays loose most of the game, and if he can, love you him. Know, I love the I, way he plays. I. I, I I so think aggressive. you can go both ways on that. He plays very aggressive, which is you know can be really nice, and you break out the puck very smooth. But then it also leaves you to mental lapses where he's playing loose on the blue line, the puck gets stuck in the ref's skates, and Bram Cheer takes it away for the game-winning goal. Right. So, I mean, you have like both uh, double-edged sword on that. Carl, I know we were talking about this. You kind of see the same way on that, right? Yeah. The thing with St. Thomas, I, 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 I say this. I feel like I say this about St. Thomas every year. You know, they're, they're fun to watch. There's a ton of talent there. They're very aggressive. But we know when they run into an, a hard-nosed, tough, defensive team, you know, I'm not sure they can tack up with that. And, I mean... Did they beat Wyzetta? Uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> is Wyz- <laughs> uh, I'm looking at Wyzetta. <laughs> is Wyzetta a hard-nosed well, team? Wyzetta got blown out by Burnsville. Okay. All right. I'm just saying they're a defensive team. So. Wyzetta's not going to be in Schwann's Cup gold next year. I know. <laughs> okay. I know. So, but I, I think I, uh, St. Thomas Academy with their second place in the Swan Scrap Gold. That was that was good. Okay, six. Carl, you have Centennial. What's going on with Centennial, Carl? Yeah. <laughs> well, they've been on a good roll lately. They've picked up some quality wins just before the, the Swan Cup. They beat Blaine, beat Duluth East. Um, and they come in, come in, beat Minnetonka, beat Eden Prairie, which is very impressive, and played pretty well in the competitive loss to St. Thomas. So. They just they keep slowly building momentum here. They're like a gumshoe. They just won't go away. <laughs> yeah, that's true. They don't. I mean, even against even against Elk River, where they're getting thoroughly outplayed, it was a game until the St. Thomas end. needed an empty net goal to put yeah. it away. I, I I think the question mark that I have with Centennial is they're they don't have that. You know, McGregor's good, but they don't have that look to player sort of thing. They're all around solid. But they're equally yoked in mediocrity. I, I agree. They don't, you know. Next year, I think is their year. I, I've said this a couple times on the show, but I still think they're hard nosed enough. Again, yeah. go yeah. back to St. Thomas Academy. This is a team. If they make it to state, I still don't think it's a guarantee they're getting out of five double A. If they make it to state, that's a team. One of the teams you just don't want to play. Remember no. that Wyzetta, uh Centennial game a few years ago in the oh, state yeah, tournament? Yeah, that yeah. was a classic. Yeah. That's what you're going to see on a Thursday night. Well, and they're going to the get up tournament. to play. If they're in the yeah. tournament, they're not going to sleep on you. I agree. Seven. Seven. Lakeville North. Okay. Uh, a couple uh, questions here. Uh, they went one, one, and one in the Jamboree, right, Carl? Yep. Okay. Why? Why number seven? Uh, sort of fits, fits comfortably. I mean, you know, they've had some, some good results. They beat FTA at the start of the year. It, um, Let's repeat that again. They beat STA. I love one. the look on Danny's I mean, Danny's face when you say that, Carl. <laughs> 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 yeah, but, but at the same time, there's some question marks in there. They've got the loss to Eastview, the, the tie to Burnsville. So, you know, on the whole, they're a very, very solid team, but depth has always been a question here. And then we're just, you know, Going to the occasional off night, it looks like. So not quite in the same tier as the two side of them. I expect a little bit more out of them out yeah. of the St. Louis Park tournament. I did too. I, I, I still keep them one one one. That keeps them even par for this for their <laughs> rankings. But they didn't. They're not like. Yeah, I talked to assistant coach uh, Jake Ennebeck, uh before the tournament. He goes, "We're going to find out what we're all about." And I go, "I think Jake doesn't really know." You know after that yeah. weekend, I still don't think he knows what they're all about yet. I, I mean, it, no. just. Based on what it, what we saw, I I think that you know they have weird identity right now. Yes. I think uh, I agree. So I I think they're appropriately at number seven in mid ranking, but still questions. Okay, this but, is the one I've been waiting for. Yeah, number, I've been snoring through this rankings until you got to this one. Go number ahead. eight, Hill Murray, six, one and three. Carl, why Hill? Give us some justification before we pick on you. <laughs> Oh, uh, well, I think, first first off, they tied Eden Prairie. which They, they also uh, tied Tartan. <laughs> that they did. Okay. And White Bear. But uh, they made it until, you know, the last game of the Schwann Cup before they lost their first game of the year, which is also not bad. And lost with a close one to Mid-Talka, another good team. That's not bad. They killed Burnsville, but by a larger margin than they beat, they beat them by the first time. They've beaten most of the other weak teams they played solidly. So, you know, this team's quietly starting to have a, a pretty good year. 
Uh, they I have just, uh, I, very quietly. So quietly, I cannot hear it yet. They have decent <laughs> players. I mean, Kyler Yo is a decent player, and Bremer is good, but he's also five foot one. Uh, oh wow! wow. They, they have a good goaltender in Jake Bagley. Um, but I, I just, I think we're going to learn more about them in the St. Thomas game, and I think they win the St. Thomas game actually. Wow! No chance. Okay. St. Thomas is. Way uh, better than Hill Murray. Uh, Lechner coaches them. Kind of my new well. team. St. Thomas is my new team, I think. I th- I'll get you gear. <clears throat> no, I don't need gear. You like I wearing like blue. I can help you out here. I like them. I broadcast <laughs> them in the Eden Prairie game a couple weeks ago. I was like, this is a good team. A lot yeah, of they, speed. Uh, very sharp uniforms. Anyways, Hill, Hill still has a lot for us to prove. And so number eight is still a question mark for me. I think they would float more comfortably around like 11 to 12. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I as if you don't know, I use Carl's rankings for my Class AA on YHH staff rankings. This one's going to be really – these letters are going to be really hard to type in because I disagree with it so <laughs> firmly. But we'll, I'll, yep. I'll do it. We have a deal, Carl. We have a deal. So Okay, number <laughs> number nine, um, let's talk about a team that's kind of gone south recently, Eden Prairie. Hard to argue with uh, that, that ranking. I, I think a number nine is appropriate. The wheels on the bus have kind of fallen off, off, off. So yeah. um, I just – uh, they need to right the ship. They need to solid up some stuff I all across the board, I want to say. I did not see them play, so I can't make any commentary. I, was I didn't not watch at the, them. I was not at Ritter, so I didn't see any of it. I, I was not either because I was sick, but, I mean, looking at box scores, these are teams that they should beat, and they have beaten any Dyna yeah. <laughs> and stuff. And so I see that. You know, it's not a team that should be tying Hill Murray when you have Casey Middlestead. Yeah, speaking of that, though, the, the psychology, I can only speak to the psychology. So you, you beat Hill Murray in a shootout, and then you lose to Dinah, and now you're, like, pissed at each other, you know? Yeah. Now it's like you go play Centennial, and you're totally not up for it. You know, you probably, yeah. you know. no. Here, I was thinking about this. Knowing Casey Middlestadt, after they played Dinah, he was probably out shooting pucks till like, 3 in the morning. Yeah. You know, he's probably so mad. He's probably exhausted by the time the Centennial game comes around. And, you know, I, I just think that this is typical. I mean, Eden Prairie, We I think last year there was a point in January, late January or February, where we were kind of writing them off. And yeah, we lost them in a because, Tonka. It was like, yeah, and over. Graham was, you know, not yeah. playing well. And the next thing you know, you know, they're Eden Prairie. state finals. Yeah. So I still think this is a state finalist type of outfit. I'm not too worried about it. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree with that. Um, and then number 10, Carl, you have Holy Family. Yeah. Carl, get closer to your phone. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm right. Okay, why do you have, yeah, why do you have Holy Family at number 10? Well, <laughs> they had been looking like a decent team until this past week when the fire was definitely extinguished in the in, in the jamboree there. Um, they, they did salvage the tie against Lakeville North, which at least sort of you know, kept them in the top ten, but losing to Moorhead Maple Grove is ugly. And that, that win against Edina starting here is still doing a lot of work. So they need to get together quickly. I was talking to Maple Grove, Dad. He goes, yeah, we kind of stole one from Holy Family there because they were – Thoroughly outplayed, outscored, out, you know everything, but yeah. they, they scored the lone goal, mm-hmm. and that's what matters. That's all that matters. I, I and I wouldn't jump yet to put Maple Grove ahead of them. No, but I still think no. uh, at this point, I think I'm not. I haven't studied the whole the Holy Family schedule other than the Grand Rapids game. If they can beat Grand Rapids, they deserve to stay in the top ten. If they can't, they play Delano at least too. Yeah, yeah, and Orno or- 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 too, right? Yeah, they have a decently tough – but, I mean, the real test will be Friday at home against Rapids. I think that will be a good mm-hmm. test. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm going to – We'll get to that later. Yes. Um, okay, 11, you have Tonka. 12, you have Blaine. 13, Maple Grove. 14, East. 15, White Bear. I think the only one that stands out to me in this list would be Duluth East could probably move up, or Tonka had a decent tournament too, winning the consolation. Yeah. So, so – yeah, um, better, yeah. Yeah. East, yeah. And East has been East, East has looked good, but the results aren't quite there. So I have trouble moving them much higher than they are. 
Okay, now let's get to Class A. We're going to talk the top five teams in Class A. Um, emphasis on the game that Tony and I drove up to in the Hermantown Delano matchup. Tony, I want to get your opinion of this before I just nitpick oh, it. Oh, so you want to you want to destroy me before? Do you I, want to do you want to destroy it's fine. me? I'll I, go first. Okay. I'll go first. That's fine. I was really uh, impressed by how Delano played that game, and again, the shots were in a certain fashion and <laughs> you know 40 to 20 or whatever I, the shots on goal doesn't don't mean a thing especially when they're perimeter type shots i mean i don't think that the hermantown had that many more great scoring chances than delano did uh delano just you know so, so just to set the scene for people that don't know much this game the score is three to two delano's leading somehow uh <laughs> six minutes to go um I don't know the exact shooter. I was shooting pictures with my camera, but they're, let's just say it was Hallinan. But they're on <laughs> it was the top play. line. Let's <laughs> just <laughs> top line. It was, it was either Hallinan or Karen because it wasn't Ben Myers because he was at the top of the umbrella. But it was one of those two. Gets the puck in the slot, wide open, lots of time, fires one off, crossbar goes out of play. That thing goes in. It's 4 2 with five minutes to go in the game. Game over. Game over. Yeah. You know, flip the switch. Hermantown does what Hermantown does best. They convert. On two great goals by yep. Tyler Watkins, yeah, Waddy and, and Waddy did it. You know, so I, I give credit where credit's due. Hermantown's the number one team in the state, and they were the better hockey team, shots and carrying play and all that stuff. But I still think that Delano, I mean, Coach Plant again, maybe he was just being, you know, nice, planty, yeah, very planty. But he's like, I don't want to play those guys again, <laughs> you know. Okay, he. It's harder to get Hermantown up for Delano. Because there's, there's the communities are a lot alike, and you know it's a public school thing. Yeah, it's not hard for Plant to get his team up to go against Breck. That's true. I, so he's uh, probably cheering for Breck in the section two <laughs> A final. Believe it or not. Okay, so Delano, uh, good team, Tony. They're awesome. I okay, love their team. I'll I'll contrast you on Here this. Here comes one. the one line argument, but if you do that, I'm going to use it against you on Grand Rapids. So go ahead. Here's the thing with they're the, Delano. They're identical teams. They're not identical. Delano and Grand Rapids are identical. Defense. No, they're they're not. Identical. And their second line at Rapids is so much better than the second line Oh, at yeah. Delano. There's just a bunch of NHL draft picks on that second line for uh, Grand Rapids. I, Give me a break. It, Carl, I, I think you said it appropriately. You compare them to Little Falls with Hanowski and Fester, and I think that's a good comparison. What do you think? Yeah, I yeah, would. Danny and I were texting back and forth after this game. And, you know, I watched some of this game. I watched some of uh, Delano's game against Breck earlier in the year. And, yeah, it's just – when that top line isn't on the ice, there's not a lot going on. And the defense just has so much trouble breaking the puck out. And, yeah. you know, yeah, you can get away with one great line and goaltending, but it's just a very thin line to walk. And I think it's very easy to get knocked off when you play that way. And here's the other difference with Rapids and Delano is Rapids' forwards can break out the puck. Delano's top line cannot. I, I think that's that's where I see Rapids. Rapids is faster in that sense. Micah Miller is the fastest player in the state probably. And, and he just, you know, that team is more creative and better at placing the puck in open space than Delano. Tony, you're shaking your head like I just committed murder. No, I, it's they're identical teams. They even have the same colors. I mean, black and orange. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I really, really like Delano. I like their chances uh, beating Breck. I watched Breck twice this week. I still think that Delano's a better team. Okay, talking about Breck. Breck is the number three team. They won Schwann's Cup Silver in a um, shootout. Shootout, a nine-person deep shootout. I don't know why he didn't. Um, Coach Larson didn't put Cars uh, uh, Breidemann or what? Heidemann. Heidemann. Heidemann scored the game winner, and he was like the ninth guy to go out. Yeah, Carter. that was a little bit odd. <laughs> that was that was a little bit odd. Maybe he was saving that ace in the yeah. hole. <laughs> but I for, the ninth one. <laughs> for me. Breck is my team to beat right now in Class A. Yeah, you said that to me before the show, and I gave you the same look you just gave me that Delano wasn't Grand Rapids. Yeah. They are. They're carbon copies of each other. But I think I think Breck has better uh, – their defense is really good, led by Weigel. I think that you look at Matchless and um, Heidemann, those are good forwards, and Lyndon Oldness was an all-tournament player last year. I think – this Breck team has been in the tournament before, and they know how to win. That's where I say they're the best team. 
Uh, I, I think that SPA will beat them this week, So, oh, yeah. which is a good segue into SPA, who didn't play. play. No, they, they played in TRL. Yeah, I yeah, went to Thief River, and every score was running time. Yeah, it, they did what they needed to do in Thief River. Yep, I agree. Well, now that we're up near Thief River, we can stick to number go to number five, which is East Grand, who I think is probably playing the best out of everybody in this in the state. I mean, that's a good squad. Yeah. Um, I was great. Yeah. Yep, Carl. No, we're, we're acting like, uh, you know, De- Breck and Delano and Hermitown are, like, off in their own little universe sometimes, but I'm not totally convinced of that, but I'm really curious to see what, you know, the SPA, the EGF, whoever has those second stick, what, what, all, what they all have to offer. Cause I'm not sure it's as lost time as people think, or top heavy as people think. Uh, I think the bottom five the teams class. can all beat the top five teams in this class. In this class. Like the Alex's. Oh, so. Alex, Cathedral. Yeah. Uh, I don't know about Hibbing. I don't think Hibbing can beat Hermantown. Just, I just no. don't see it. I, or, or Greenway. That's this week too. Before we move on a little bit, I um, let's. I do want to say one thing. Um, I was reading on Twitter the East Grand Forks uh, or Grand Forks Herald. I want to say had an article that said that twenty three um, of the last appearances of the state tournament for 8A have either been East Grand Forks, TRF, or um, War Road. And so, and they've won, of the 23 times that they've been in state for Class A, 10 times they have come away the state champion in 8A. So East Grand is still a team not to be messed with. No, not at all. Car- Carl, are you there? Yeah, I'm back now. Dropped you there for a second. Sorry about that. Yep, yep. Okay, so let's move on past games, past last week, and move into a kind of a funner segment. We want to call this checking up. Um, this is a checkup on kids that left early. Carl, you have a list on this, right? Yeah. yeah so let's I'd like to run through all th- no, 25, 30 players on this list, but we'll just sort of go through some of the highlights. Um, yeah, there's, these are kids so. that are left high school hockey or playing junior hockey, and let's hear how they're mm-hmm. doing. Yeah, so some of the players have gone to USHL. Uh, the leading scorer of all the Minnesota high school players who played Minnesota high school last year in the USHL is Isaac Johnson from Anoka. Which Michael, is a l- that, little surprising. Has 14 points. He, he, has 14, four, he has 14 points, and that's the leader, mm-hmm. right? Uh, yeah, in, in 20 games. And most so. of these kids have played around 20 games, so we don't have to list off their games. Yeah, 20 to 26, right? Yeah, yeah. so let's just rifle uh, through them. Let's hear how everyone's doing. Yeah, so uh, Clayton Phillips also being pretty productive from blue line, four goals, ten assists, as a defenseman. Uh, Scott Prudigo, Kaprunovic, one goal, six assists, seven points. I think he could have done that in one game in high school. I think well, I've yeah. seen him do that in one <laughs> yeah, game in high school. He, he's not playing Eveleth anymore, though. So. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Jackson Nelson from Laverne has four goals and six assists. He got a bit of a slow start, but he picked it up and is at ten points now. I think um, he did do that in one game. Oh, he for sure did that against Worthington. <laughs> that, <Yeah. laughs> that didn't take that much work for him to do that. Yeah. Uh, Marco Reichenberger, two goals, five assists. That's surprising. I would have thought he would be doing better in the USHL. I, I like, mm-hmm. and I've always liked Marco Reichenberger, and he grew, too. I think he's over six foot. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, He and his dad was a good player. Yes. So, um, no, I'm surprised at that as well. Yeah, so... Um, a couple of defensemen, Connor Mayer from Bedell, Jake Bushy from uh, Deep Brennan, River, Brennan have a Bushy. couple of assists each. But Brendan Bushy, right. correct. Um, yeah, so you know, a couple of assists there for, for both of them. Well, uh, and Connor thanks. Mayer, Carl, I thought you and I thought yeah. he was probably one of the best defensemen we saw last year. Yeah, and, and a very productive one, too. So it's not like he's one of those defensemen you expect to just sit back there and get only two points. Yeah, uh, he, had only, he only has two points. Does Bushy have any points? Maybe two? Yeah, a couple. Yeah. Yeah, and Dubuque. Yeah, they both have two. Bushy had like mm-hmm. 40 assists last year. Yeah, he was yeah. the real deal. He's He's got his mm-hmm. commitment. You know, I think the other surprise was Ben Copeland. I think he's only got a, a handful of points down in Waterloo, right? Yeah, he's and got he, one goal, one assist. Yeah. Just think of Copeland's sheer walker right now, and that team's the number one team in the state. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. not a question. No doubt. Yeah, I know. Um, no doubt about that. Uh couple others we got here. Um, Hank Sorensen, that late start, but he's got three goals in assists, so 
how many how many penalty minutes does he ratio for defenseman. How, how many penalty minutes does he have? Uh, I think it was twenty. I didn't write down, but please. Twenty-seven, twenty-seven, and fifteen yeah. games. <laughs> twenty-seven and fifteen that's, games. We love you, Hank. Yes, <laughs> that's actually pretty reasonable for him. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, one of those could be a ten-minute misconduct. You just don't know. I know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, Jake Bischel, I think, goalie from Bedell, only played only played six games. Respectable stats in those games. So, that's kind of. A, All right, we lost Carl there for a second. I, I'm i going to blame um, Tony's wife for calling us there. So. Yeah, and I answered her call. So <laughs> that was really classic. <laughs> so bear with us. All right, I'm back. Uh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, Carl. I hit uh, the wrong button. Sorry. Oh, okay. That's all you. <laughs> I hit the um, right, I hit the right button that time. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, moral of the story is really uh, you look at some of these kids could really really be benefiting their high school teams right now, and could be benefiting at least probably playing more games than some of these and, and benefiting themselves. Yeah, I mean some of them I I, I understand like a Cam Buell at South St. Paul. An upgrade. Move, he's playing. He's got 17 points playing for the Magicians. I get that. That's yeah. a good move. But Ben Copeland would be on one of the top teams in the state, on the top lines in the state. Yeah. Last I checked, I know the reason they go there is either to get a Division One scholarship or to get you know scouted by U.S. by NHL scouts. This is draft year. But the last I checked, there's NHL scouts in the rink. All the time. Well, I if you're Makes Ben no Copeland, sense. if Makes you're Ben no Copeland, you will play Eden Prairie four times now, which this guarantees you, <laughs> it guarantees you twenty <laughs> NHL scouts, scouts it, every time, every time, because was, they're watching Casey. So I was talking to a guy, and he was like, "Oh, uh, 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 an NHL scout on Saturday." He goes, "Thank God, Eden Prairie lost because then now they play earlier. I can go out on New Year's Eve because I was planning on having to <laughs> you know, spend my New Year's Eve at Ritter watching Casey." Well, so. and it, I mean, the thing is, like, some players, it makes sense. I I will say, like, Jackson Nelson, it makes a little bit of sense to me. I mean, he's no still going here. to school at Laverne, I believe. Yes. And, and uh -huh. you know, the <laughs> competition between Worthington, Round Lake, Brewster, and, and you know. Fairmont. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's just. <laughs> it's, on Brewster. Yeah, it's <laughs> not there. So, I, I think um, that you – have to see that as a good thing for him. Probably, yeah. But and he also turned down the national development program too. Yeah, so, so he could. He's live in the spot he wants to be. He's made a good decision. But then you look at other ones, and you just go head scratchers. You know are what are you doing, sort of thing. But that's that's just you know what we see right now. So right. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'll just sort of go. Say, you know, we kept we kept lists of you know, everyone who leaves early on the forum for probably. Six to eight years now, going back, probably even longer, and uh, so you can sort of go through and look at these lists and say, okay, so what happened to all these guys? And so most of the ones who go to the USHL, you know, there are a couple every year that don't pan out, but most of them make it D one. You start going down a little further, looking at the kids who leave high school for the NHL or Tier three. There are a lot of names you've never heard of on there. Yes. Yeah, and that you will never probably hear of again. Sort right. of thing. I right. I think something that I was thinking about. Um, we did have when I was at St. Thomas. Um, Nick Larson left early to play at Waterloo because he wanted to get a scholarship to go play at Harvard. He ended up not getting a scholarship to play at Harvard. He ended up playing at Notre Dame. So I mean, you don't always get what you want too just by leaving early. Correct. Sort of thing. So um, I think we'll we'll check back in on this. Uh, but that's kind of what we're seeing right now um, with some players. All right, we got the last segment is the pickums, right? Just well, uh, four good games. You want to run through other games before, and then yeah, just, yeah, we and then, then we'll go deeper on the pickums. Yep. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll do that. Um, just to give you guys some games to go to um, on Tuesday, Breck plays Orno. Um, that's a good game to go see if you're in that neck of the woods. I yep. might swing by that one. 
up north, Hermantown plays Greenway. Tremblay's out for the rest of the season for Greenway. Uh, so that's a yep. big loss to them. But the Greenway will still play well. Um, so if you want to go up and see that one. Um, thurs- those are on Tuesday. Thursday, SCA plays Hill. This is a game that Good I will game. probably be at. Um, I think Hill has a lot to play for in this game. Um, fr- that'll, be a, that'll be our now high school game of the week. So really? you'll be able to see every goal. We'll be tweeted on our Twitter feed. And that will be a, a good one to see. Um, on Friday, Hermantown plays St. Cloud Cathedral. So if you're going up to in the St. Cloud area, I That'd would definitely stop by and see this one. Yep. Last team to beat Hermantown in the regular season. 2013. I, I looked this <laughs> look this up. It's Cathedral, but they also had Pekanski back then. They don't have Pekanski right now. Um, <laughs> and then Saturday, a non pickem game, Prior Lake, Eden Prairie. This is a game that Eden Prairie needs to kind of step back up in, and Prior Lake has a lot to prove in it as well. And it's a section C game. It's, it's not a, a conference game. Yep. Exactly. Okay. That being said, let's get into Pickums. All right. Um, I get to run this segment. Our first <laughs> pick'em game um, is Minnetonka and Duluth East. That's up in Duluth, correct, Carl? Yep. So you will, you will be at that game. Uh, since Saturday. you're Since you're attending it, I'll let you go first. I already know what you're going to say. Go ahead. <laughs> I'm going to go on a real limb for me here and pick Duluth East. <laughs> All right. Uh, Danny, I'll go last. Do you want to – you I'll, want to take it? Or you no, to... I'll pick Tonka. I think okay, speed's, good, good, uh, good, speed's going to be the difference maker in this one. I think um, the way that Tonka plays, you know, aggressively, uh, and they're balanced more than East is, I think that's going to make the difference. I like that call. I'm going to go East because I think they're the better team. Um, I think they're one of the st- – I think they're, if I were making a top ten, Duluth East would be in my top ten this week. I like. I really liked the talent. I like the direction they're going. Uh, again, some of these – Ties and losses last last minute. I'm I'm observing the overall body of work and what they do on the ice when you watch them. I like what they're doing. I think that what they're gonna do, they're gonna they'll beat Tonka this weekend. <laughs> okay, what's next, Tony? Centennial Maple Grove. Uh big it's a conference game and a section big section seating game, one of the biggest ones in five double A. Um since Carl went first, Danny, you're up. I think Maple Grove wins this because Section 5 AA is the hardest to pick. And, yeah. And, and, and I think uh, – um, but Maple Grove, I think they'll split this um, in the season. They'll play each other twice, and I think this is a season split. So Maple Grove wins this one. Well, I'm going to stick with my boys at Centennial and pick them to win this one. Uh, Sam Huff is out. Looks like he'll be out for at least a couple weeks. He was hobbling around. Oh, you could have uh, told me that before. Yeah, I well, hey, <laughs> I, I'm just going on my info here. <laughs> and Centennial's playing well, so I'm going to go with the uh, Cougars on this one. Carl? Yeah, I'm, I'm on the stick at Centennial bandwagon now after the, their performance in this past couple weeks. So I'll stick with the Cougars. Yeah, obviously. <laughs> uh, you have a number six in the state. <laughs> Uh, okay, next one. This is going to be a fun one. Breck SPA. It's my turn to go first. I'm going to go with my boy Matt Funk and SPA on that one. Um, this brings us back to you, Danny. Um, well, then I'm going to have to go Breck because as I picked Breck to win the um, the state, I, I guess this is their you path. Bet. I was like, if you don't pick them now, yeah, when are you? Yeah, this is their path to win. But I think this will be a very close game, and I could see SPA coming away with this as well. All right. Uh, Danny. I mean, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Wherever I am. Uh, I like SPA, and that's what I think it's a slight upset. You know, we were talking about this earlier. How I think the gap between the top three in Class A and a couple teams after that isn't as big as some people think, and I think this game will prove that. So far right now, Carl and I agree on every pick. I think it switches here. It's, is this where we switch, maybe? Yeah. All right. R- Rapids Holy Family. Who goes first? This was the one where Carl went first. So you go first again, Carl. Uh, this is a tough one, but I, I'm going to go with Holy Family just oh, because they've been sort of right. in the dumps the past few weeks. They need a big win, and I think their tough defensive style could actually be a, an asset against a team like Rapids. Uh, I already know what Danny's going to pick. We're going to go against you on this one, right? Thunder Hawks. Thunder Yeah, Hawks. I'm going to go with Grand Rapids. I think, they're, I think the Andover game was an anomaly. I think they're going to load the – Cannons up, and that game will be broadcast. I think that's a let's play hockey game on Friday. It's this gonna is going to be a game. six to five game. 
it, this is going to be a high scoring affair, even yeah. though they both have no, very no, good goaltending. Only to score. <laughs> yeah, but I, I think both have very good goaltending, but Rapids is going to put the puck in the net, and I think that they're going to be so aggressive on offense that it's going to leave defensive lapses. So These two played outdoors last year yep. at a park in Grand Rapids. Yes. Who won the game? I can't Rapids, remember. Rapids, Rapids won? won, I want to say. Won. Overtime? Yeah. or No, I think they won outright. Okay, I wasn't sure. I remember I listened to the game on the It on was the radio. hockey day. Yeah, it was hockey day. So I was freezing. Mm-hmm. Yes, you were. <laughs> yes, you were. I am out of commission this weekend. I'm hosting a tournament. YHH is hosting a tournament in Rochester, so I won't see any of these games. Twitter will be my sole source of uh, updates, so please update me. I'll have a few people updating scores all over the state this weekend as well. Uh, where are you going to be, Carl? You got uh, one game you want to? East East Talk on Saturday. May go out to see Cloquet Andover, too, on Thursday. We'll see. And Danny, for some reason, has just fallen in love with Breck. He's picking them to win the state. <laughs> Yeah, I'll he probably picked him see to beat them SPA, and he says he's going to go see him play Orno. And as did you, do you have a secret love for? My dad S- went to, to Breck, Breck for a little bit. Oh, there bit. you go. Yeah. Okay, all right. But um, the, depending on how my cold's doing on Tuesday, I'll see them on Tuesday. I'll probably see St. Thomas Hill on Thursday, Rapids Holy Family Friday, and SPA Breck on Saturday. Depending, well, you know, maybe another game on Saturday as well. Any uh, final thoughts from the fair city of Duluth, Carl, as we wrap up the show? Uh, I'll just say that. Well, you know, for the rankings, you know, for the first few weeks, it was pretty standard. You know, a couple teams moved around here and there, but things finally always really take shape after the, the holiday tournament, so everything kind of blows up. And if you look at AA right now, it's about as wide open as it's ever been. You know, the separation from 1 to 15 is, from, you know, about as small as you've, you've ever seen. Yeah. It's a lot of fun in the second half of the season. Last year when I was doing rankings, not competing against you, it took just a lot of time. And this weekend I thought, man, I do not want – I would not want to do the rankings after all that happens. So that's kind of my overarching thought. Danny, how about you? Um, I, I actually think Class A is a lot more interesting after this week too. So that's where I see it right now. That's why I'm going to try to see a couple Class A games this week. All right, for uh, Carl and Danny, a uh, huge thanks to our uh, sponsor, Mayo Clinic Sports Medicine. Uh, thank you for tuning in to today's show. Have a nice day. Last night my kid tore up his league. He had a hat trick right up his sleeve. Coach said he's never seen that. Gemini Athletics going to have to stitch the seat patch. I've got Ferraris, Maseratis, drive all over the place. I drink martinis, never seen these looks all over their face.